everybody. I'm still going through Sasami Chan's box of books. Thank you, Sasami Chan. What will we find today? A little of this, a little of that. It is really hard to tell what I'm touching with gloves on, but sorry, internet. Ooh, Cinderella that doesn't appear to be done by Disney. Wow, that is a really fancy cover. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. 25 cents. The, that might be a new record. Mm. I think the last one was, our last low was 29. Mm. Good be. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. As you saw in the video, provided I didn't nix it, Cinderella that's not Disney. I have no idea what's going to happen in this, except that there's a girl named Cinderella, a prince, and a shoe. Also, this one's a little golden activity book. Yes, this is Cinderella, the story of Cinderella and the prince with paper dolls to punch out and dress. I remember when that was a thing. Wow. Though this book is definitely a little older than when I remember it being a thing because it's only 25 cents. Wow. And it's the earlier form of golden books on the back. I mean, these aren't even golden reading books. These are giant golden books for growing minds. Wow. Things like science and astronomy and geography. I know quite a few people on the internet who probably, I would like them to read the science book. <laughs> All right. Cinderella, paper dolls to cut out and dress. Pictures by Gordon Leite. Oh, that's a very lovely carriage. Mm -hmm. Very nicely drawn. Ooh, fun art wow. style. Yeah, this is, whoa, I like it. All right, the little golden books are prepared under the supervision of Mary Reed, PhD, formerly of Teachers College, Columbia University. This is a brand new book written and illustrated especially for golden books. When you have read the story of Cinderella, punch out the dolls at the front of the book, then cut out Cinderella's dresses and the prince's suits, and you can dress the dolls. Ah, now you see they've been taken out? Yes, that would be the torn page marks in the front. Copyright 1960. All mm. right, time to begin. Dang, that is just such an interesting art style. It kind of, I know it's like a completely different genre, but it reminds me a lot of the um, way the art looked for the first Vampire Hunter D movie. Hmm. Very stylized, really nice, crisp line work. Have you watched Vampire Hunter D right lately? It it's rather up there on the Rotten Tomatoes list, surprisingly. The first Vampire Hunter D? Yes. Huh. It's not as shiny as you remember it. I wasn't going by shiny, I was talking about the art style. Once upon a time, there lived a girl called Cinderella. Cinderella had a stepmother and two mean and ugly sisters. Sisters, not stepsisters? Hmm. They made Cinderella do all the work while they dressed themselves in fine clothes and enjoyed themselves from morning till night. Hmm. That is so lovely. I like the cat in the background. One day, an invitation came from the royal palace. There was to be a grand ball, and everyone was invited. Everyone but you, said the ugly sisters. For, of course, you cannot go to the ball in your ugly old clothes. Wow. Really like this art style. It really is hard to. It's like it also reminds me of those Disney cartoons where they were talking about science and stuff like that. Mm hmm. A little bit. Also, it reminds me a lot of like early society page sketches before you really had photographs. Ah, yeah. It also reminds me of the fashion sketches I've seen. Cinderella helped the sisters get ready for the ball. She curled their hair and laid out their dresses and ran upstairs and downstairs a dozen times, fetching and carrying, buttoning their buttons and tying their ribbons. At last they were ready and drove off in their carriage. Just the art style is so nice. I like that carriage down there. And look at all the energy in this top drawing. Mm -hmm. I love the mirror in front of the mirror. Well, certain mirrors can have different magnifications compared to the other, so that could be a thing. 
they do a contrast of Cinderella from the others as well. Notice how she's more cleanly drawn, her proportions are more normal compared to the stepmother and the two sisters. Well, she wears servant's clothing, which doesn't have 50 million petticoats and a bustle or forget what it's called, but the things that make up a hoop skirt. Mm -hmm. Just I'm talking about even their proportions underneath the dresses. Like, this sister's really elongated and this one's kind of stubby. Whoa. Pretty. Oh, how I wish I could go to the ball, sobbed poor Cinderella. Yes, because when you slave all day for your sisters and your stepmother, you know, the best thing that could happen to you is to go to a party for one night. Well, my dear, and why not? said a voice. Cinderella looked up and saw a beautiful fairy. I am your fairy godmother, said the fairy. So please stop crying, and we will see what we can do. Cinderella stopped crying at once, and did exactly as her fairy godmother told her. Cinderella fetched a pumpkin, a pair of mice from the mouse trap, and a friendly rat from the garden. Wow. I really like what they did with the godmother. Yes. Actually looking more fairy-like. Yeah. Though, if you ever, based on the ancient stories, if you ever meet a fae, don't trust them. Run. Yeah. Don't make a deal with them either, because that's really dangerous. Mm-hmm. Because, like, seriously, what is the price for all of this? You have to wonder what the prince was like. Yeah. And the fairy godmother turned them into a carriage, a pair of fine horses, and a splendid footman. Then she touched Cinderella's raggedy old dress with her magic wand, and suddenly Cinderella was wearing a beautiful ball gown. Yeah, very nice. Very sun patterned. Very mm -hmm. sun patterned. I, I really like that page. This is the page I was reacting to when I went, whoa. It's the godmother is glowing and got this pretty ribbon that's going on from, I believe, her hair. Mm -hmm. Wow. It, the ribbon almost looks like glass. Quickly, quickly, said the godmother as Cinderella climbed into the carriage. For you must promise to be back by midnight. Cinderella went to the ball, and she looked so very beautiful that the prince immediately fell in love with her. He would dance with no one else the whole night through. Very lovely. The prince is well done, too. His motif matches hers. Very much so. As you look closely, there's little suns all over his outfit. And a very proper dance at her arm's length. And apparently outside. Because they're dancing next to a well. A fountain. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. The angle I couldn't quite see. On the stroke of midnight, Cinderella remembered her promise to the fairy godmother, and she ran from the prince's arms. She ran so quickly that she slipped out of one of her beautiful glass slippers. They didn't look like glass on the previous page. They looked white. Just as she left the palace gate, the carriage turned into a pumpkin, and all Cinderella's fine things disappeared. There's a prince running out. You can kind of see the shoe, this little white dot right here. Mm -hmm. Though the question is, why does the shoe stay when everything else changes? Yeah. Also, that was the first time I've ever thought about that. It just, it just hit me. I was like, wait a minute. If everything else changes back, why does the shoe stay? <laughs> the only explanation I can come up with is it's not on her body anymore. But neither was the carriage or the... And... In most versions of the story, she still has the other shoe. So the whole thing of it not being on her body doesn't count. Mm. Also, that was a very lovely picture. I love the rain. Yeah. You can see a nice clock tower in the background. Yep, showing that it's just after midnight. It's a very nice image. I love how everything's laid out. It really has this great pattern. It draws you right to where Cinderella is. You see the pumpkin... Though commonly that's shown shattered. Mm -hmm. This one is fully intact, except for some leaves falling off of it. Uh, you see the mice and the rat running off. So, interestingly, her outfit looks more like a tattered version of her ball gown rather than being changed back to her normal clothes. Hmm. Because it does look more tattered than her clothing in the other pages, though it is the right colors if I calculate in night mode. 
because that would be the front apron and the dress. The prince was heartbroken to lose the beautiful girl. Next day, he sent out all his messengers to find the girl whose foot would fit into the tiny slipper. Far and wide, the messengers searched. At last, they came to Cinderella's house. The feet of the ugly sisters were much too big to fit the slipper, so the messengers asked Cinderella to try it. I love how, just look at his face, the messenger's like, oi. Because you can bet that almost every single girl in this scenario is trying to cram her foot into the shoe. And I bet you he's been through this all day. So he's like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Though you have to wonder, he sent out all his messengers, but they only have one shoe. I'm guessing the other messengers are saying, find all the women, bring them back. <laughs> Cinderella tried on the slipper, and of course, it fit because it was hers. I love how he loses his wig over that. Yeah. Also, he looks so ecstatic. Oh my god, I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> Then the fairy godmother appeared again, and with one touch of her wand, Cinderella was once again dressed in beautiful clothes. More royalty this time, though. There's even a crest on that dress. Makes you wonder what the fairy's getting out of this. Yeah. A royal holiday was announced, for it was the wedding day of the prince and Cinderella. Cinderella forgave the ugly sisters and her stepmother, and they all went to the wedding and had a very good time. And Cinderella and her handsome prince lived happily ever after. Interesting. I've never heard about the whole forgiving part. No, that's big of her. Well, some versions of the story, Cinderella is more generous than others. The cover's wonderful, too. As you'll see, because that's what, you know, we usually use the thumbnail and what's up on screen as you listen to us. But I'm thinking, like... The way this is set up, it's almost like this is when she's going out to get the pumpkin and she happens to meet a mouse, a mouse along the way. And you can see the castle in the background. And the house. Though a bird wouldn't be out that time of day, at least not that type of bird. Hmm. And remember a very short Cinderella story for grown-ups from the Sword and Sorceress series that focused on the uh, what happens after. Hmm. Where the prince turns out to be a terrible, terrible person. And Cinderella spends just as much time, if not more, doing work mm. than she did whenever she was working for her stepmother. Interesting twist on the tale. I would like to see like a version of this where the fairy godmother comes out and asks for a deal. Because she's a fairy. Yeah, there should be be a price here, like the firstborn child or something. Uh, nothing that severe, but maybe like once you're married to the prince and your queen, you have to do something for me? Or was the deal already made? Did someone else set it up to bring Cinderella to the ball? Hmm. That's a, that's a good point. You know, because the prince is marrying a commoner. Maybe someone wants him out of the royal succession. Hmm. Yay! Theories! <laughs> <laughs> we can't help ourselves, people. <laughs> yes, well, this has been a little golden activity book. The activity pages are gone, so we had to do something active. <laughs> Cinderella. The story of Cinderella and the prince with paper dolls to punch out and dress. <laughs> Pictures by Gordon Leite. Thanks, Sasami Chan. This was really fun, and I'm really digging the art style here. Yeah, very nice. So, because it's a little golden book, it's gotta be in print somewhere. So, yeah, Amazon link. Though if there's a reprint, it's probably a different artist. Kind of a bummer on that. Yeah, because that happened with Pantaloon. And I really like the original... Well, original as in the one from my book, Artist. Mm hmm But, you know, used books do continue to circulate and get second and third lives, especially children's books. So check the links, check Ebates, and per usual, Amazon and Ebates are still not affiliated with or sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. I know, seriously, after all this time. <laughs> Thanks again for listening.